Eccentric exercises are likely some of the most common exercises you'll see on the internet prescribed for Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy. But not everybody responds equally well to all versions of them. So in this video, I'm going to first show you the different types of eccentrics you can get, also how they might help your Achilles recover, and then we'll look at what type might benefit different people more and what other exercises could be useful. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from TreatMyAchilles.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for any type of Achilles injury, all done via video call. Now, I realize it sounds a bit weird. People always ask me, but how can you treat me or assess me if you can't actually touch me? But we explain in detail on our website why online appointments via video call work so well to assess and treat the Achilles tendon. So if you're interested in getting help with yours, have a look at the description. I've put a link to our website and you'll find all the information there. If we look at the calf muscle Achilles tendon complex, you've got your calf muscles, which are your gastrocnemius and your soleus, and they attach into your Achilles tendon and that attaches onto your heel. And when the calf muscles contracts, it pulls on the Achilles tendon and lifts the heel. So it's either the pointing down movement that you get, or if you're standing in your feet, you get lifting up on your toes. If we think of the types of muscle contractions, you get concentric, eccentric, and isometric. And for the calf muscle specifically, this is a concentric contraction. So the muscle is shortening as I'm contracting it. Then what I'm doing now is an isometric contraction, which means the muscles are working, but we're not getting a change in length in them. And then you get eccentric, which means the muscle is still working because I'm not just dropping to the floor, but it's helping me control my movement down and it's lengthening as you're contracting it. So you can see that with eccentrics, you're getting a lengthening of the muscles as you contract it. Now, if we think of the typical tiptoe movement, which is a calf raise, that is used in nearly all movements we do in the day with our legs. So whether you're walking, whether you're running, whether you're jumping, climbing stairs, it uses your concentric as well as your eccentric phase. And if you're having to reach for something, you're often in isometric movement. The two types of eccentric calf raises you get is eccentric only or eccentric biased calf raises. Let's look at eccentric only first. That's the classic one that they used in the Alfredson protocol. With that, you're lifting up on both legs. So your calf muscles aren't working that hard because the load is spread. Then you shift all your weight over to the one that you want to work. Lift the other one up. And now this leg has to work really hard, lowering your heel slowly to the floor. With the eccentric only version, most of the work is done only during the lowering phase and you don't do as much work during the, the going onto your tiptoes. Just on a side, you'll notice I'm wearing my shoes for this. It is really important when you do your Achilles rehab, especially when you start adding extra weight, that you do not do it in bare feet on hard surfaces because that can really injure your metatarsal heads of your, of your ball of your foot. And once they're injured, they take a long time to get better. And that then derails your whole rehab program. So always either wear shoes or if you're going to do them barefoot, be on a really, really soft surface. Okay, so eccentric only. As I mentioned, it's used in your typical Alfredson type protocol. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. We don't use them that often. And again, I'll tell you why in a minute. Let's first look at the eccentric biased exercises. Now, these are the ones that we favor. And... What they do is they use both of the up and down movements. So you'll, if I want to exercise my right leg, I'll be going up on my toes. So I'm getting the concentric work in as well. But then I slow the eccentric part down. So often you'll be lifting up at any rate you want or very fast if you want that. Depends on your rehab plan. And then you really take about three seconds to lower yourself down on control. There are quite a few different variations of this type of eccentric biased exercise that you can do. And it really depends on how sensitive your tendon is, how strong you are, what type of movement you actually need for your rehab. So your physio will decide that. But let me show you. So usually if somebody has a really painful tendon or it is quite weak or we're just not sure how sensitive it is, we want to test the ground, we'll start with double leg ones. And that's just without any weight, going slowly up and down on your toes, but I'm going down too fast. 
you'll slow it down if you want it eccentric biased. Then you can do it on one leg if you want more. Oh, let me do it this way. If you want more um, weight through it, you can add a backpack to your back. Sometimes you have to do it on two legs with a backpack. Often I find if a patient's knees aren't happy with single leg things, if you keep it in double leg, just load them heavy with the backpack, it tolerates it much better. You can also do it over the edge of a step that you just drop your heel slowly over the edge and come back up. So there's many different versions and the type of tendonitis you have, whether it's insertional versus mid portion, will determine what type you, you do. Now, we've made videos about all of this in the past, so I'll put links to specific videos about exercise rehab and progressions and things in the description of this video. So both eccentric only as well as eccentric biased exercises have been shown to improve function and decrease pain in people with Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy. And it does it in several different ways. There's evidence that a 12-week program can actually help improve the injured part of the tendon, that it changes the structure back to so it looks more like a normal tendon. There's also evidence that it strengthens the rest of the tendon up. So even when the injured part is not fully looking normal yet, the rest of the tendon is strong enough that you can actually get back to your normal activities. Eccentric exercises can also help improve tendon stiffness. Now, tendon stiffness is not the same thing as your tendon feeling tight and stiff and uncomfortable. That is something different. Tendon stiffness is measured with a specific type of ultrasound machine and healthy tendons tend to have a better tendon stiffness than injured tendons. Then eccentrics have also been shown to improve the springiness of your tendon. So when you move, the tendon is meant to store and release energy and eccentrics can help that. And lastly, there's also evidence that it can improve motor control, which basically means it improves the connection between your brain and the injured part that you can control it better and just get better performance from it as well. So why don't we prescribe eccentric only exercise plans that often? Well, yes, they were seen as gold standard several years ago for Achilles rehab and that's down to really seminal work that Dr. Alfredson and his team did, which was the first study to show that eccentric based or exercise based rehab really improved Achilles symptoms. They used a really high dose of eccentric only exercises, three sets of 15 done twice a day with heavy loads, and they didn't have any recovery days between their set, uh, between their exercise days. Now, the reason why we don't prescribe this type of exercise plan is one, we find it just flares most people up. Most people are not strong enough or trained enough to cope with that high volume of high load. Second, Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy is an overuse injury. And we find our patients just end up overusing their tendons further and then the pain never settles or it even gets worse. The last issue we have with this type of plan is that when you do eccentric only exercises, you're only really training that low ring phase. Now, when we move, you always use the up and down phase. And we've had patients who's consulted us where their pain wasn't getting better on what they were doing and then they came to consult us online and we found that, well, they are really strong in the eccentrics, but they have not a balanced strength for the concentric. And then we worked on fixing that and that helped. So we find doing the biased exercise, we actually train both parts, work better because it tends to keep things in more balanced um, ratios. However, that said, we are all different and some people do actually benefit from eccentric only exercises. And the two cases that I can think of off the top of my head, there may be more cases, is when somebody is really, really weak. And especially for Achilles tendon um, post-surgery, this can be useful. They don't actually have the strength to lift up and down on their toes. Then if you can get them to do that eccentric where they lift up, hold that and just hold it and then slowly control the down movement, it eventually allows them to do the up and down movement. So it can be really useful for that. But again, it's not right for everybody. Then the second scenario is if you've reached a plateau, because sometimes people progress really well with their Achilles rehab and then suddenly they're just make, not making any progress. Well, when that happens, your plan needs to be jiggled up and something needs to change to see if we can bring about different changes in it. And then eccentric only exercises might be part of the solution there but it really depends on what else you've been doing up until that point. So we don't believe in a 
never or always type of Achilles rehab plan that we create for people. It really depends on the person, what they've been doing, their symptoms and what they want to be getting back to and also their current strength. So does this mean that eccentric biased exercises are the best exercises for Achilles tendonitis? No, it doesn't. Luckily, Dr. Alfredson and many other researchers have continued their work. And we now understand that it's not about the best exercise for all cases of tendinopathy, but actually that you tailor the rehab to the person. So you need to choose the best exercise for where that per person is at the moment. So the capacity of the tendon, how strong it is, how irritable it is, what sets it off at the moment. And then you have to progress that slowly over time so that eventually that load matches the load they need to actually do their activities that they want to do. And that will be different depending on what they want to do. So somebody who wants to run versus somebody who just wants to walk, for instance, very different load. So more commonly these days, we are prescribing isotonic type exercises where you lift up and down on your toes. And that can be eccentric bias, but it can also be quick. It can just be heavy loaded. It can be quite gentle. And if you're doing any sport that has explosive moves in it, you definitely also will need some plyometrics, but only much later in your rehab plan. And then isometrics where you just hold the position can also be super useful, especially for people with really painful tendons or where they just lack quite a bit of strength. So there's many ways to go about this and it's all about tailoring it to the individual. By the way, if you want more videos about exercises and exercise choices, we've made loads of them. So I'll put a link to those in the description of this video, as well as the general treatments video that you can just get some ideas. Brilliant. Hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, just ask them in the comments. And if you need more help with your Achilles, you're welcome to contact us via the website. I've put a link to the website in the description of this video. Take care.